Why do I own a Range Rover L322? Welcome back. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell next to it and you'll be notified of any new uploads. So, why do I own a Range Rover? Well, it's a tricky question. For one, the suspension goes up and down so I can get in it nice and easy. I've always loved Range Rovers. Um, I've had Classics, I've had a P38, I've had the L322. <laughs> I'm not sure for how much longer. <laughs> um, coming over here today, we're up, we're back on the farm, <laughs> as you can probably tell. The old vibration, we got quite a light load on the trailer today and the vibration is quite bad and I've noticed that when it does it, the rev counter's fluctuating. Which leads me to believe it's set on the gearbox which I really, really hope it's not. Because... I d what I'm going to do, I'm going to service the gearbox next week. Drop the sump, change the filter, fresh oil, and put in um, uh, a gearbox additive to which basically prevents shudder. Uh, it only does it in fifth gear when you're getting a load on, say you're doing 50 miles an hour, you get it in fifth gear, it's sort of like one and a half thousand RPM, you accelerate, if you can, if you accelerate before it kicks down, it gets a bit of a shake on and I've noticed that the old rev counter is sort of up and down, up and down at the same time, so that leads me to believe it's not the prop shaft because the prop shaft would have no effect on the revs whereas the gearbox would. I don't know what to do about it. If it is the gearbox, we might have to trade it in. But I hope not. Anyway, a few of the reasons why we've got a Range Rover. We've got a couple of hectares of land. Uh, now the Audi we've got is a Quattro, four wheel drive, but it's very low to the floor. It's got some sports suspension pack on it S line or something. Um, it's very low to the floor, so there'd be no good in this field. It will drive in the field because at the minute all the grass is cut. But where I've been going and out of it last week, we've got some pretty serious ruts, and I think the Audi would get stuck in that. So yeah, we've got the Range Rover so I can get around the field, I can get into the woods. Um, another reason, I use it for cutting the grass. Have a look at this.
So that's the grass cut. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to cut grass in luxury? You know, sitting here in plush leather seats, mowers chugging away on the back, lovely jubbly. You know, it's the perfect ride on lawnmower. <laughs> that's another reason we got it. Another reason is so we don't get stuck. Yeah, so we know the traction control works on the car and everything. That's all. That's all good stuff. Um, and I did have big plans for this car. I'm just a little bit concerned that if it's the gearbox, I don't want to be putting a second-hand gearbox in it. I don't really want to be putting a reconditioned gearbox in it. So that only leaves a brand new gearbox if I can get one. Which I've no, I've not done any research. You could be talking of a couple of thousand, maybe more pounds. That is, um, it's not the sort of job I can do at home. Any other job, you know. I mean, I've I've changed clutches in transit vans and stuff on the drive at home, only because that's the only transport we had and we needed it back on the road. This gearbox is a bit more tricky. It's bloody heavy. It's going to be take it into a garage job and for what the gearbox is going to cost and the labour to fit a new gearbox I don't think the car's going to be worth it to be honest because it's 17 years old now I will be gutted if we have to trade it in absolutely gutted um, yeah, I've been sourcing some parts for future in you know further on down the line for turning this into an expedition truck i found the expedition roof rack the the ladder that goes up the back door um sill guards with rock sliders on i found sump guards i found a transmission guard they're quite expensive but you know we was gonna be turning this into an expedition truck and i was getting quite excited <laughs> but um <laughs> If this gearbox is going to be, what I might do is see if I can trade it in. Once the house, once, you know, we've sold the house, Tina signs, Tina's going to, oh, bloody neighbour's dog, Tina's going to be signing contract this week, so then they've got 10 days, and uh, after that, if they pull out, they lose the deposit, so once we've sold the house, and if it is the gearbox, I might see about trading it in because we, we'll have a little bit of money. I don't want to spend too much because we wanted to buy a mini digger. But if we've got to buy another car, I don't know whether to go for another Range Rover or what. <sighs> oh no. 
Now it's a toss up between a Range Rover and a Toyota Land Cruiser. Now I know Toyota Land Cruisers are pretty bulletproof. I used to work for Toyota. At, well, it was an independent Toyota garage. He'd lost the dealership. They'd they'd gone to the big boys, and um, he'd ha it was he was the second Toyota dealership in the country in England back in the sixties, and um, Toyota decided they was going to go to Marshalls in Peterborough, which is like a big concern they've got all the de they've got all the brands all under one banner sort of thing um so we still specialize in toyotas we still factory train mechanics so with all the special tools but um he took on daihatsu which is just toyota underneath as most of you will probably know um but daihatsu's just do silly little cars like that at the time it was a sirion and the kuare and what else did they do? They did a little 4x4, four four, but I can't remember what that was called now. Anyway, they were just Toyotas in different clothes. Uh, they did the Daihatsu 4-track, which was quite a popular 4x4, four four, but they stopped making them um, for safety reasons, I think. For whatever reason. So, Toyotas are pretty good, but they are fairly expensive. Anyway. I'm going to be doing some research and uh, I'll get back to you on that one. So this video <laughs> has been why I own a Range Rover, why I like a Range Rover and also <laughs> what might be turning me against Range Rovers. Um, I hope it doesn't because I really do like this car but um, if needs must we'll have to just trade it in and get something I don't know whether to trust Range Rovers or not. So, we might be preparing a different vehicle for expeditions. <laughs> <coughs> but we'll see. I'm going to service the gearbox next week. Hopefully that will, if it is the gearbox, and we're on 132,000 miles now, so hopefully servicing the gearbox, putting some anti-shudder additive in it, new filter and everything, um, might prolong it a little bit because it has been it changes gear perfectly it's smooth it doesn't clonk um, and it would be a real shame to have to get rid of the car just because of the bloody gearbox but when things get this old and they get beyond economical repair so we'll just have to take it from there I'll get back to you next week I'll probably do a video on how to service the gearbox so keep your eyes out for that one and um, I know that there's videos on the internet of it already but I'm just going to do one anyway so <laughs> I hope you like this video please click the thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and from me and Tina grafting outside <laughs> it's bye for now